Be a hell of a draft from both sides. Can't wait to see how this one pans out. It seems like both of you guys were leaning towards Liquid just because of the 100% win rate. You'd like to say stats don't lie. Seems like the safe answer to me. Personally, I love the Entity draft, and I'm going to go against both of you here. What are we expecting? I mean, early level one team fights, is there any chance? There is. Um, Pudge, Pudge is, is really strong level one. Now, ever since they buffed the hook, there's so many times where you'll just smoke up or you'll... Even you just hook the banner in and you'll just get a hero instead and you just... First blood's a lot more gold than a banner in. Yeah, and you're, you've got the Radiant side as well, so you could always go for the tree cut. If you want to trap someone in, it doesn't quite look like Liquid's really prioritizing that. But they are putting themselves in nice, aggressive positions. See if they find anything. We'll see. Toby's going to frontline here on the Undying. Doesn't really want to take too much damage from this Lena, so it does seem like he might back off as Insania. Well, that's going to be a nice shard. He's trapped three of them in there. Boxy with the perfect position. Oh, Toby's going to give away first blood, and that's a dangerous point to try and fight in when, you've, when you're against a Tusk. Yeah, they just get the perfect block from coming out, and Matoma, he's got the damage, as Gunner said. Level 1 hook feels pretty damn good. That does give them damage. a lot. Yeah, so much damage coming <laughs> out. Just pure damage as well. So they lose a bounty, but they get a lot more in exchange. In the mid lane. I mean, Storm Stormer against Mickey. Talk to me about it, Gunner. Like, th this mid lane, do you think one side or the other has an inherent advantage between these two heroes? I think Lena has a pretty big fan advantage, but we've seen... Lena's kind of fallen off recently in favor, at least in this tournament, because they nerfed her armor a little. I think she lost a little damage. So she's a lot more manageable than she used to be, but just the the way these heroes both want to play the lane, it's very Lena favored. A lot of damage. Lushrak can't outrange you. You just get to hit him on, on and on and on and on, and he just has to sit there. Yeah, it feels a lot easier for Mika to just work that lane. I mean, Storm Stormer can kind of shove out the lane as well, but it's just going to drain his man a lot more. And once that man is gone, he can't harass like Lena does. What about this top lane, boys? I mean, you've got Zai on that 100% win rate Enigma with Foxy on that pos 4 slaughter, and they get a very nice Ooh. shards off to block them in by the T1 tower. But it, ooh, can they punish Pure? He's taking a fair bit of damage here underneath that T1. Fishman, he's going to try and have a run here. Pure still dropping very low as Zai. He'll chase them down. Trapples down to try and slow them up. Who are they going for? Pure! He's the one in danger. Foxy, has he got the shards? Oh, he's got it in one second. He should have the angle. Oh, he does Pure. He's trapped up. Have you seen that before? The shards block on the T1 tower. I've never seen that. In that fact, was so cool. They know a lot of now uh, a lot of safe lanes now. They push in these first two waves. They get a double wave and they die at the tower. They force you to walk away from the wave, give gold to XP. Foxy knows that. He pulls the wave before it gets to the tower, but Pure is already under the tower. He's prepping oh. for this dive, and now he has no protection. He has nowhere to run. He just takes all the tower shots and goes down. Oh, yeah. incredible! Go on, John. Yeah, it's just a great start for Liquid. And you, you, add, you, we, we talked about this top for Zaya, right? Like it's supposed to be a bit tough. It's not looking that way. They're going again. Again, Pure. It's important this time for him to survive. He has not got that mid arc warden this time, so they aren't trying to at least save Pure. Foxy, he's just so aggressive, moving back in for some more hits, but Pure this time is going to survive and kind of goes back to that point. It's so important for Pure to be the big man this game. Yeah, even going on constantly, he has no shrapnel charges. Oh no. Oh, another nice shards with the snowball set up. Foxy trying to go for the body blocks into the Malifus. Pure is going to be able to walk away for now. He'll turn around for some Eidolons, but with the way this top lane's going, it just seems like as long as they've got mana liquid, they just don't need to slow down. Yeah, they just force themselves forward. They are making this a bit of a slower lane for Pure. Uh, he is still finding his CS, but every single time you see Boxy come in, it's it's always a kill threat. And this is the toss without even the tag team up. Once you've got that, much easier to run them down. Yeah, they're going again. Again, again and again, again and again. Let's do it. Pure, shot it up, has nowhere to go. We'll try to man fight through this one, but the Malefus is oh, there and Pure is gone. Fishman, he will try to punish, but with the tag team, he's slowed up. He might feed another kill away to the side of Liquid. Look at this. This is disgusting. Boxy, this is filthy from Boxy. Oh, man. I mean, from first blood to this blood bat in top lane, Boxy's just had so much impact. And this is the lane we expected the sniper to kind of do well in. You know, you just melt the eidolons, you stand back, they've got the gap close with the tusk, and it just doesn't feel like you're able to do much as Fishman here on the clockwork. Like, yeah, he's blocking off, he's draining some mana, he's getting some good uh, cancellations with a battery salt on the chase. It's just not enough to save them. Yeah, Boxy's just been doing something magical in the melee for uh, this whole tournament. He's just outstanding every game.
We should talk about the bot lane, I suppose. We haven't really looked at that whatsoever. You're gonna have that Poz one plunge there against Toby and of course Kataomi. So the position three undying. Matumba, he's been farming okay, but Toby, he's been farming a little bit better with that CS sitting at 19 and 6. And with the strength still, it seems kind of hard for Matumba to stick around. In fact, they're gonna try and pincer him in in this tree line. Toby, he doesn't know where he's gone. And Matumba, very nice juke out with the fog. They cannot catch him. Problem is though, he's not finding any farm on this pot. There, it's gonna be a good lane for Undying. Again, this hero, just, his strongest suit right now is the lane. He just has a strong lane, he builds into the game. And on the side of Liquid, Matu is gonna be a little sad, but he's not really the game winner. It's similar to Stormstormer last game, it's all on Mikkei. He's not gonna go for this magic build lane, I believe. He's just gonna go probably for Boots to Travel or an Arcane Boots to do a BKB, maybe a Silver Edge. Just, he's gonna be the tower, he's gonna do everything for you. So Matu just needs to survive and find his way in the game. Foxy, this time around in a bit of danger. Fishman gonna try and punish this task as the battery is not doing so much damage. It is gonna wear off. Foxy, he does have the brown boots up, so he will be able to outrun the clockwork back towards the Roshan. He'll salve up. He's gonna be just fine. Yeah, just builds out, wastes a little bit of time from Fishman. Does or is he? Example. Snowball is there. He's gonna try and buy a little bit of time for himself as Pure was going for a creep pool. In fact, now he's gonna try and fight this one out. Zai trying to come in and help out. Boxy still going. Tag team is there. Pure, oh he's the one in danger. They just turn it right back around the side of Entity. And Pure, he is just getting blocked to oblivion. Kataomi, he's gonna show what? up, but he hasn't got the damage. They're still no trying. Oh. Fishman, he'll finally get lucky with the battery assault, but he might drop now. Zai is still chasing. Do they have a Malifus up? They do. Fishman still running, but it's not gonna be enough. Boxy, boxy, boxy. I mean, he was so close to living as well. Like, the snowball was just off cooldown. He might have been able to just get out and just find Fishman without dying. Boxy again. Oh, so much. Boxy, stop it. I thought he had another one. <laughs> it's just it's all over the map. And for Entity, we're not seeing that kind of play out from the supports. We're just not seeing as much impact out from our Clockwork, out from our Tiny. And it's not their fault, although they're trying now. Well, they've got a decent target. Cogs will be there with the Battery Assault. Matumba now in danger, and it seems like they will let him die. It's still a decent pickup, but like you mentioned, he's not the carry this game. Yeah, I think... Machu's been having a similar game to Pure, but it's just not as... It doesn't look as bad because he's not dying. Right. Oh, Stormstormer! Mid lane ends up getting Lacuna down by Mickey. Looks like Boxy was around to help out. Uh, that's a fantastic kill for the side of Liquid. 100% kill participation on Boxy. Ooh, All seven insane. kills. Not even seven minutes in the game. And just running around constantly. Yeah, he's just making work happen on map. Entity trying to set their eyes down bot here. See, he is caught. They have found him. Toss is there onto the creep with the cookie away. In comes the clockwork for Zai. He's joined the fray. He does have black hole, but Fishman, he's gonna find the enigma. There's no chance for him to be able to get this one off. So Zai will drop a nice pickup so far for Entity. They might lose Fishman, but it's gonna be a decent trade. In fact, he's still getting out of there. Scatterblast will slow him down, but in the end, he will go as Storm Storm. He shows up, Boxy's around, but against the Undying with the Tombstone, it's too hard of a team fight that they're still gonna try with this little Shredder. They'll take it out, but they are losing bodies left, right, and center. Liquid, they'll lose a third now, maybe even a fourth as Insania. He was the initial one getting caught out, and eventually he'll be the last one to get caught out. Really good rotations coming out from NTD. They wrap around for a long time down bot. It looks a little bit awkward to start off with, but it does pay off dividends. You are getting space out here for Liquid on Tumba, but considering all you find with Storm Storm around, that's a good gold injection for our Lush. This is just nice. They fully wrap around the tower, clockwork's in. Zai just expecting to TP in those trees and get a black hole from the tree line, get a free kill, but he TPs in, clockwork's already on him. He just gets solo killed almost by the clockwork and doesn't press black hole, and now this whole top lane is they're kind of feeding away the gold. Yeah. It does feel like you're reeling it back in here for Entity staying in Radiant this game. You're buying space out for Pure as well. He's managed to just stay in the jungle away from this activity. And Storm Storm is the one just working the map with that lush. Um, for Liquid, it, it, you don't have the lead. You're still 9-6. to six. Are you recovering enough? Is, is, is this the point where you just kind of look at Matumba to start to get tankier? In fact, looking for more. Uh, Fishman, we get caught out. We'll go for the Cogs. Boxy is there with the tag team and a very strong avalanche from Kataomi. Was it going to matter? Like the turnaround is there. Cookie is going to allow him out for Fishman. He is barely going to be able to survive with his life intact. I think 
There's not going to be much on Batu. He didn't even go for the Vanguard this game. He went for the Hood, noticing how much magic damage is on Entity. So he's just probably going to play for his really big timings. I think Ags is probably where he looks to join the game. I, I wouldn't be actually be surprised if he ends up going BKB after his phase boost, just the first item BKB and just all in commit for this Lina doing everything for you. Yeah, we'll see if that's something that Tumble will want. There was a little bit of pressure coming out on the mid. Entity again still clumping around. It's rather interesting for Entity to keep taking this aggression as well. We don't even have a hook shot coming out yet on Fishman. Once you have those initiation angles, it does feel like the game gets a lot easier. They do spot Insania out for a moment there with the tiny on Kataomi, but not going to be able to really run in just yet. And just goes back to this equi equilibrium state of farm. Zai shoving up top, though. TPM. They are going to try and defend this one. TPs are coming. Stormstorm and Hook up from the backside. Looking at Matumba. Dismember. Going to help him out a bit. In fact, the snowball in. They're going to try and force the fight. Stormstormer. He might be the one to get caught out. And may drop it. No. Oh. He will not. They'll take Matumba. They'll find Boxy. It'll be a double kill for Toby. And it just seems like every fight with the Undying in it is a fight that Liquid just can't take. Double. Yeah, they, it, the tower's so low, You at some point you start to expect, oh, they're giving up the tower for free. It's a, We don't have to worry about it, but TP in just the last second, get the catch. Lusher, I thought Stormstorm was dead, but a nice toss back gives him that little reset in the fight. He doesn't die to the rot. Yeah, and I, I saw the confidence in Matumba. You know, he pops open that Hood of Defiance. Level one flush heap, not the biggest damage block, but he, he figures we could go for this kill. Doesn't quite shape up. And Entity starting to, again, find that punishment. They take these fights so far away from the Sniper. They get that build-up they want on Storm Stormer with his activity. And for the moment, it doesn't feel like Liquid's able to really match up just yet. Smoke out from Mickey and from Boxy, though. They've got that Aether Lance up on Mickey. A little bit more reach out from the Lino, but might just be Boxy scouting out here alone. It looks like Mickey's going to go for the magic build. I thought he was going to go for the physical to be a carry, but I think uh, their logic right now is he does. you can one-shot the sniper at some point in the game if you go magic build, or even the Lesh. And probably if you kill the sniper, everyone else will die at some point to the ending one of the punch. And so he doesn't really need to be this right-clicker. He can just play to kill one hero, good enough. That's just make it a 45 off the bat, just survive, maybe stun once or twice, and play off, play off the fight. And I think that's the that's a big one for Mika. Switching out for that magic. We'll see if it does pay dividends. You still have to worry about the magic damage coming out from Entity as well. You see Zai just kind of farming around in that jungle, being scouted out by Fishman. They're still managing to hold Liquid off from really getting too much more done in the invasions here. And they are still buying that space out. At what point do you feel like for Liquid that they've kind of allowed Pure to farm too much and it starts to become a threat in that sniper? Uh, maybe once he gets his item after Dragonlance. So I think he just finishes the Maelstrom now. Once he gets the Dragonlance, it's, he does damage, but it's after that. Fishman getting caught out. Mid lane, Laguna, not going to be enough yet. Eventually he does drop a box. He had to stick around so long that they will trade quite effectively here for Entity. And Toby shows up at that right moment with the Tombstone and just doesn't allow them to fight back. Liquid, I'm not sure, are these fights in their favor? It's it's hard to say. Entity has the range in the fights. They have the sniper and the lash, and they have the first. But they're going to constantly make these aggressive moves, like on Matu with Bot. Yeah, this one's in, definitely in their favor. Or is it dismember? Is going to be them at Tumba? He'll try to fight back. Ooh. A very nice cookie up from Insania. Now the turn around with the Mortimer's kisses. Storm Stormer. He could try to run, but there's no escaping. Just rains fire on the lash rack, and it seems like Entity they had no other response to it. And that's just sick from Insania. Coming in at the right time, cookies at the right time, and the kiss is on point. Very close from Matu. Gets at least a second off the dismember, so gets a little bit of healing, just enough to get out of there. You also see how strong the Flesh Heap is now versus Lush. Every, every tick of her, the Lush will only does 20 damage when the Flesh Heap's active, so really tanky versus the hero. Sounds very, very balanced indeed. It's it's fun. Yeah, I imagine it is. <laughs> fun, fun is well. balanced. Yeah, absolutely. And Dota is supposed to be a fun game. So that's how we balance around here. Of course, for Entity, I mean, it's it's not all gloom and doom. They're still having these massive stacks being taken here by Storm Stormer. His Bloodstone doesn't feel like it's going to be too long, although the timing isn't maybe as fast as what we saw from Mika in game one. But it's still going to be there. And once you do have that frontline sustain, all that damage coming out from Storm Stormer, you can make some work happen. Uh, you do have the full rate pack up on Zydo. 
So again, we're reaching that point where the Enigma is just going to be holding back a lot of what Entity will want to do up front there. Yeah, the big difference is uh, Pure is top net worth now after that rough lane. Three deaths in the one lane, and uh, he's also very good versus Wraith Pack. One of the things this Sniper is, he can just kill the Wraith Pack very quickly, not much to worry, and it, he is hard to jump. It's going to be on the back of probably Boxy, who ends up going for a Force Staff. I think Force Staff's really nice versus the Clock, versus the Lena versus the Tiny, but no Blink. They're not really going to have any of these Blink Daggers to catch the Sniper in the early game, so it's a lot of just maybe wrapping around on the Sniper, catching him first, or just trying to fight away from him where you see him on the map. The smoke up. Behind mid game, they're going to rotate into that dire triangle. Oh, they'd love to find Storm Stormer, but he's quite low. He's going to go for a reset back at the fountain. Got a nice timing here for Storm Stormer, just clearing out the triangle while he could. Instead, maybe into the mid lane they go. They'd love to find a pickoff and perhaps move into that T1 mid tower. Thing is, Toby is the one they'd have to aim. He's hiding in that tree line for now. It's just not going to be that easy to try and burst down this Undying. Unless Matamba, he could try. A shot will give the vision. Mortimer's kisses are out. Snowball is there as well from Boxy, trying to buy a bit of time as they do go back into Fishman. The Clockwork's still surviving. Meanwhile, in comes the Cavalry. Storm Stormer, he finds insane. Everyone's getting tossed left, right, and center. In goes Toby. He wants a little bit more, just taking so much strength away. And it seems like this time for Liquid, they just oh. can't force the fight, but they do find Fishman. Toby, he'll keep going, but they don't have the lockdown for any more. Yeah, you can just see the response out from Entity. Instant TP's in the moment they see these heroes break out from the smoke. And they just commit to hold off. They know how important that mid tier one is. They just toss all their bodies in Liquid. They just don't have enough to really get it done. They also kind of fragment themselves inside. Like we saw Insane just trying to target out the Tombstone. Couldn't really do much. It's also just how strong a die is when you dive. You go past, your team kind of gets stretched out, the Tombstone gets dropped, you can't kill it because not everyone's around it. Dyer's and then you just get keep slowing, keep slowing, keep slowing, the tiny TP's Dyer's in, the, you get shrapnel, and just so much slows for when Liquid has to chase just walking in. Dyer's middle tower See what they can do now, denied. Liquid falling a little bit further behind. 2k net worth now, the way of entry, and you already talked about this, but Pure just escalating out of control now with that net worth, and it's a struggle to find what kind of answer you have for this Sniper. But Toby just doing such a fantastic job on the Undying, second in net worth right now, and just so tanky, so hard to deal with, and it's just not the target you want to try and burst down first, but Toby's just giving them no options whatsoever. So Liquid, maybe you feel like they're a little bit trapped at the moment, maybe need to slow down the pace of the game, get, get, a, get a few more items up, but it's kind of hard to know exactly what they need at the moment. The only item they can really wait for is his Pudge Axe. Everything else is, even the, the Lena Axe, 3,000 gold away, the Enigma Blink is 1,000 gold away. You don't want to wait for so many different timings, but probably once they get the Axe, they're going to smoke up and look for a fight. Yeah, they've got to build off the back of Matu, and that nice timing you do get with a Pudge, the damage out he does have on hand. It does feel really tough. I think, uh, talking about Toby again, he does have the look sort of up. They do get a good hook here. Yeah, insane, yeah. Let's get caught out. He'll try to run towards the north and try to juke out Fishman, but it's just so hard with the battery assault. Even the tombstone being dropped just in case they needed the vision. And Toby, he'll take his fifth kill of the game. Got it. It's just getting way too much in this undying. Again, he's got the Lotus Orb up. He's already got a casual cloak up going to the Hood of Defiance. And with all the strength he's stealing, with the way he has to save his teammates from the snowball potentially. It's gonna feel really hard for Liquid to kind of come in. All their control, most of it, is single target outside of Snowball, not the most reliable to catch a group or the LSA. So you're always gonna have some value from just that dispel coming out. And Toby's just been really, really massive in the front line. Yeah, and on the side of Liquid, they don't really have the front line right now. Matu hasn't had the opportunity to group up with his team and be this body. He just, the one time they did it, they won the fight. In the jungle, he jumped and they turned it on Stormstormer. But outside of that, he's kind of had a, He's had to struggle trying to find the, the front line. Right, so he's still grouped up. Everyone just hanging around pure, making sure the sniper remains safe. They're going to find a double damage rune with a smoke up. This could be perfect timing for Entity. They could not hang around, though, on the high ground, just waiting to see if somebody does take the rune away. In fact, never mind, they don't have the vision. Boxy did not see him. In fact, now, Mickey, he's the one to get spotted out, but they can't hold him down. Stormstormer, he will move in, but again, just doesn't see the angle be about it. They won't be able to abuse the double damage quite yet. Really close to getting tossed back all the way in, but thankfully for Mickey, he walks away, doesn't get tossed, and 
dodging a gank. That was the left track bloodstone timing. That's again, that's the biggest timing for the hero. You get this item, you want to go fight constantly for the rest of the game, and they weren't able to get a catch with it. Yeah, it's missing out a little bit on time, giving Liquid a little bit more room to breathe. They've got their own ags up now in Matu. So uh, the Pudge is kind of ready to go if they find something here. Oh, hook shot in, very, very nice from Fishman, finding the angle, but there's Insania. Let's get the cookie away. They turn this one around now. That's a big avalanche up from Kataomi, but where's your follow up? In comes Pure. He's got the double damage. That's like gone. Let me find more. Snowball in, Foxy has no choice of the matter, he's gonna go down, Kisses are still going, but Pure, he jukes them out for now, they just don't have any more follow-up, in the meantime, they do at least find Toby, in they go again though, Insania, he's being targeted, and he'll be the third target to go down for the side of Liquid, they only find one in the mid lane. It's just a little bit too fragmented, you're super strong on Matu, he just melts through Toby in the mid, but he's not there to help his team, he's not there to try to, you know, do a little bit more damage, poke them down with a rot, and they, they were just really clumped up there from the side of Liquid up top. There's a nice ward on the cliff, which is what lets uh, them get the Hoshan and Boxy, but nice disengage, you see what Liquid wants to do, they want to kite them into this ward, they want to keep running backwards and the second entity went too far, they want to turn, but nice avalanche, big four-man stun into Toss, and once that happens, everyone's caught up from Entity. They're all grouped up now, and now Liquid's the one fighting into the Entity. Just didn't feel that good in the end. I mean, they, the idea was good. Just doesn't quite shape up. They've got the blink on Zaydi. We still haven't seen a black hole this game. Again, not the biggest thing for the Enigma and more, but it does feel like in those situations, you're looking for that lineup. Or maybe just, again, targeting Pure, as we saw in game one, where Zai would just kind of find an angle around and take away that big core. Pure is starting to feel like that massive core. He's working on to the BKB next, and we just saw his damage out. But sure, with a double damage rune, but yeah, if you can't gap close on the sniper, he just does so much. And that fight enables him to get this BKB now. He's about 700 gold away. And now, Lina's going right, or er, magic damage, not right click. Pudge is all magic. Tusk is mostly magic. Who's gonna kill him in the BKB? Do you black hole? He might not even die in a black hole BKB. Very, very fair point. Liquid, gotta find some answers here. Entity, just gonna keep doing what they're doing. 3k advantage, 13 to 15, 21 minutes in. Seems like as the game goes on, the sniper just becomes a bigger and bigger issue. And oh, even if you gain the lead as Liquid, trying to go high ground against the sniper on dying and, and the left track, it's just never gonna be easy. They do hang around across the map on both sides. Neither side really wanting to try and force a fight. We'll see a casual scan out on the Roshar pit, but nobody hanging around there either. And it seems like the Axe is on the way very soon for Mikke. It's got a lot of cast range with that neutral item as well as the Aether Lens. Just cast from a mile away and it's, it's going to be very nice feeling for Mikke to just not have to be too close. Let's see what they can get done with this axe. Yeah, two big items picked up, which is why they go smoke. They get the blink on the Pudge, now they have a hero to go in, stun, create chaos, and then the Lina Axe, which is a crazy amount of damage. It's 35% spell amp, you also take, or 35 magic resistance and 30% spell amp. So now, this is how the sniper gets one shot. He gets stunned for half a second, Laguna, all the nukes. It does, a, I think it'll do around 1800 damage and just kill the sniper in one hit. It's gonna be massive, but that BKB pure, core pure is flying out. So it's all about timing. It's all about pinning him down in that window and just bursting them, him down right afterwards. Immediate smoke out now from Entity with her own item picked up. And it's gonna be an interesting position for Liquid right around that ramp area once more. Oh, in we go. Four man smoke up entity running right towards Liquid, but Boxy, he's around with the vision. They'll see the undying. So Liquid know they need to back off, but entity, they are still trying to rush forward. Have they got the advantage? They've got the high ground and they'll move into Matumba Man, but a cookie is gonna be there. Tombstone immediately being targeted, but it's not gonna be enough from Insania. They're still trying. It looks like the snap fire does get caught out, but that's only the pause five of Liquid. You'd like a little bit more for your trouble if you are Entity, but it seems like that's all they're going to be able to afford to get. So hard to fight when he drops the Tombstone on the high ground. You don't really have anyone who wants to hit it. The Snapfire can hit it. You miss once or twice, the Tombstone's not going to die to you purely, so... How do you fight around these Tombstones on the high ground? Yeah, it just feels impossible. Like, we've seen that twice over now, and almost the same area where they're just kind of forced to back off on Liquid Zen. Toby just being a massive beast on that Undying. Perfect positioning in all of these fights. Entity's still not done, though. The double smoke out here, Stormstormer and Katomi want to find more, but no one hanging around down bot. Liquid just kind of playing it safe, getting their farm up elsewhere. What other items can we see? Like, you are going for the BKB on Matu, as you called out there, so just gonna look to try to be active. It is after the Axe, though. Yeah, at some point, they just need a hero that, once they know that Entity's running at them, the hero doesn't turn and run and wait for anything. 
They need this. They need Pudge. They need Matu to see four heroes running at them. Press S. Stand there and stare at them <laughs> and walk at them. And so so far it hasn't happened. That's why they're constantly walking backwards. Even when they have full vision, they have to keep walking backwards. Mickey doesn't want to do it. Sayo doesn't want to do it. Foxy doesn't really want to be the one. He wants to save the one with the snowball. And so a lot of it's going to be on whether Matu feels strong enough to be that frontliner. Yeah. Right now, he certainly doesn't feel like he does. Maybe a bit more time with the BKB to come out. Zion narrowly avoiding any kind of hookshot attempt there yes. from Fishman. Picking back towards the south. More defensive itemization from Liquid as you do see Insania now with the four staff up. You can get pure just going for the full damage build as well. Scary stuff just going right into the Daedalus. And that's going to be very, very concerning. Like, if you can't find this guy, he's just going to delete your whole team. Also going for the stats over Assassinate. Oh, yeah. Pure damage. Yeah. Radiant All about the right scanning. clicks. Nice pun, Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that a couple times, you know. If you don't need the assassinate, if you don't need uh, that longer reach, it, it, re it really doesn't feel like Entity has to, because no one's really highly mobile on the side of Liquid. You just go in the stats, you fatten up, you get a little bit more durable for pure, and you just get so much more out of it as well. Liquid for their part, again, waiting for those items to come in. They're working towards a blink now for Mika. So just gonna have a little bit more follow through to jump in when needed or jump out when needed and just kind of dance around her. Also, uh, they were they are saving up for the blink on Boxy. So again, that blink save from the Tusk or blink initiation is also gonna be up there. With this stall out in time though, does it feel better for Entity? It does feel like they're getting a lot more from this time. I think it feels better because Matu isn't really getting health with the BKB. He's getting the ability to not get comboed by all the stuns and spells. But Pure's buying damage. So now that Matu's not really buying the health, the matchup of being able to survive the damage is kind of going Entity's favor until the plate mail. But that's, you know, you're asking Matu to get 5,000 gold when they're already 5,000 gold back. <laughs> So one easy ask. It's Honestly. a huge gap to kind of clear out. And, you know, Pudge does farm fairly fast, but it's still going to take some time. And he's still sharing that space with Zai and with Mika. Both of them are kind of occupying the jungle as well. Um, anything else that kind of helps Liquid out here? Entity does feel like they've got almost everything lined up. But what maybe is there? Is there like a fast, quick fix item timing that we're looking for on Liquid's end? I don't know if it's so much an item timing rather than getting the proper jump with vision. Because again, you need the frontliner for vision. They don't have any heroes that provide vision besides the Pudge bodying up. So if they catch the sniper, he will die to the Lina. He will die to, you know, Tusk Lina combo. Just the two of them. And it's just hard to see him. You'll never see him. He'll always be in the back. He has so much vision and range on the sniper. Even at night, he has 1800 vision. So just the inability to catch him is the issue. He's still grouped up, pretty much as four, just not splitting up. Just really just frontlining and making sure Pure can farm. That that's literally all they're doing is staying in front of Pure. Just making sure that nobody can gank him up. Storm's Tommy will take care of the side lanes. Liquid, they're doing a very, very similar thing across the map. Just sticking as a team, not trying to give any openings away to Entity. It's clear they have some timing they're looking for. Maybe even the blink to come out on both Foxy and Mickey very, very soon. But you are giving Pure that time to get that Daedalus up. And well, like you said, if you catch the sniper, it's not who cares if he has Daedalus. He's not going to be able to use the damage anyway. But for now, they are going to smoke up as four. Towards the top side they go. Who do they find? Zai will think away immediately. Matamba, he Dyer's might be a bigger target here for Entities. They do try to make their way through to the right hand triangle, but oh. Matamba, great read on the movement, and now the hook, it's not going to be on target. Entity, they'll try to force Roshan instead. Yeah, they've, they've got the time to do that, but there is a lot of AoE out from Liquid with the BKBs here and Blinks. Oh, Hookshot wasted just on an illusion, so at least you know one spell's down for Fishman, at least for the next minute. Roshan is still being targeted. They're trying to abuse that Tombstone and Flesh Golem timing here on the Undying. Liquid, can they fight this one out? Insania is going to make his way in, but does Cookie away? It seems like they have so much trouble getting close. Roshan, though, is still relatively healthy. They've still got time. Half HP, half HP here for the Roshan as Liquid. Still hanging around. Shards are there. Smoke is out. Liquid, can they make it in time? They're going to rush for it. There's the kiss. Matamba, he's in, but pure. He's the one to pick the Aegis up. They will not get away with it. Karaomi, he is going to drop his Matamba. He's trying to tank for the team, but bit more time and now the black hole Zai he's only got two of them but it's set up perfectly they cannot save a pure he's trying to man up through it he does take down one Aegis is gone onto the left rack they've got Mickey on the leaner he is gonna drop pure he'll just keep going for more now as Zai does get caught as well
A full team went for Entity. They just, they play it so clean. Liquid, they try to find the flank. They might find a full team wipe here. And this is a dieback on Boxy if he is caught. He'll go for a snowball out, and he is gone. That'll be a dieback immediately for Boxy. That hurts. That's his blink dagger. That's what, that, you need to blink to catch the sniper. Even in that fight, you see Matu has to blink to the tip. If he gets that Aegis, maybe the whole fight's different. But now, you've committed so much into the, the Broche pit that Mickey gets a kill, the support buys back. They kill the clock, he buys back too. The supports don't really matter. It's just so hard for them to keep constantly fighting until you're dying. Yeah, it's just so tough. And they, they did find a good angle. You did see Zai try to be really patient in that black hole, but doesn't really manage to catch enough for that massive impact you'd want, and Pure managed to reposition himself further into pit, Radiance so he had more usage out of that Aegis, and it, it just, it takes way too long for Liquid to kind of get on top, and Entity just punished so nicely. We're gonna find Insani on that snap fire. All stuff away, not gonna be enough. Entity really feeling themselves now. They just wanna keep this aggression up. They understand how much more powerful they are. Even without the Aegis, they might Radiance scope these T2 tower towers. Seems like they are setting up the mid tier two now. Don't really have a creep wave to go off, but seems like they are just gonna stick around and control this map. Make sure Liquid can't catch up in this net worth. When you go magic on Lina, a lot of your damage is based on your cooldowns. You're not constantly sitting there right clicking every single time, so you're not your damage is inconsistent. It's very high in bursts, but you have to wait four or five seconds and you do it again. And in the fight, Zai black holes and Mickey wasn't there. He wasn't able to nuke, he wasn't able to burst the Leshrac. Leshrac survives the whole black hole. Pure doesn't even die in the beginning of the fight either. He gets to hit for 10, 15 seconds, and then he just respawns with Aegis anyway. So it's mostly about just connecting Mickey to the fights at the right time. He was struggling to deal with Katomi on the Tiny for the beginning of the fight, and him and Matu have to just connect. Every single time in the fight, they have to connect. We have to go again. The Tumba, he does get spotted, forced to BKB up, but can't really utilize that BKB whatsoever apart from escaping. What a Pretty great item. It. Ogre Seal Totem is. <laughs> it's just a but even better. I always, you always see the hero and they pause for like that half second where they're, they're <laughs> cast pointing it and then a little bounce into bounce. Yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing animation to always watch. That blink you mentioned on Boxy is up and running. We got a wave coming in, although. Got him again. This time, no BKB available. Matumba, can he survive through? He'll pop the Flesh Golem, but it's just so much damage flying in from Pure. He is going to melt. The Tier 2 bot is completely open now for Entity. It, it, it's getting a little bit tough for Liquid. It just goes back to maybe Mika going for that magic buildup and the earlier BK, BKB use for Matu. Now high ground's opened up. They can try to death. They don't have the threat of Black Hole in the defense just yet. It will be up. They still have the blink snowball saves if they want to kind of take a risk. And Tito, they do look confident in this one. Yeah, this game, there's no Tiny on the side of Liquid to kind of delay these high ground pushes. Every time the Entity wants to walk up and just hits the tower, if Lina's not there, there's not much to force you away besides the Pudge, and Pudge is dead. So, free damage, free tower, they, they force the Glyph out. Really big Glyph now, because there's not going to be a Glyph for a long time. Unless they take this Tier 3 tower in any lane, no Glyph for the next five minutes. And that just allows them on Entity to really take control of the map, start to shut down that bot jungle, prevent Liquid from dipping outside and trying to get any additional buildup. 16 to 24, 12k lead out for Entity. They've, they've bounced back really well. Looks like they have managed to reset, changed their game plan, and just put up a much bigger fight up against Liquid. If you're Liquid right now, you know, you, you go back to that Magic Lina, you go back to this Pudge Core. Uh, what else is there? Is it still down to just trying to catch the back line? It's still all just about catching the Sniper. They have the two Blinks online, I guess three with the Pudge. Four, four. They have four blinks. I, you know, NA math, it's hard to count sometimes. <laughs> and it is it is all about catching the sniper. He has a Lincolns now to block uh, the Laguna Blade. It's pretty hard to pop the Lincoln through BKB. So, if, is it even possible to catch him? If you catch him now, he has so many defensive tools. The Tiny can uh, toss him away, he can force him away. And once you have to commit so far to just catch the sniper, that's where all the slows come out, all the stuns, all the AoE that... Even if you kill the sniper, maybe you just get cleaned up. Yeah, it just gets really difficult in stopping Pure from just doing what he wants in this game. And in that point, Entity, they're, they're just going for the tier twos. Nothing to stop them from Liquid's end. Liquid trying to get a bit of a shove out themselves up top, but the fortified is still there to stall. Entity do manage to, again, shrink that map down even further and just really have a great game. For, for Liquid, 
the, that jump angle onto Pure, it, it just doesn't feel great. Maybe down the line, if Boxy, say, picks up an Axe, he could have options, but that doesn't feel like it's going to be coming out anytime soon, if at all. There's a nice scan out there. No, they're in the Radiant Triangle right now, so Liquid immediately dissipating and just trying to get back towards the fountain. Just avoid, avoid, avoid the Storm Stormer. He's going to rush forward, but won't be able to find Fox. He'll be just fine to TP away, back towards his team. And they'll just try and get another part of the map. It's all you can do right now. Just play the avoid game as we see Mikke. He's got even more Magic Amp now on the Lena. I mean, you, you kind of already said it. He can already one-shot them as it is. It's more... It's the ability to do it, right? Yeah. It's not the... It's not the damage. The damage is not the issue for Liquid. It's just we go. doing the damage. Boxy, he's in. Katoomi, he'll be the one snowballed out. Boxy, he's going all across the bot. And he will end up going down. Liquid, is this really the fight? It doesn't seem like it. They're going to try and back out. Entity, they're the ones that try to force it. Once again, Liquid, it seemed that they were trying to go for some kind of initiation, but nobody was really ready for it. Yeah. Hey don't manage to hook up in time, or maybe just kind of stalling tactic out from Boxy, and you know, just try to buy its time for his team to make that executive call to group up or back off. And just going back to Mika, right? Like, he has so much damage. I think the one thing with the E-Blade, at least, you've got the Lincoln's Popper. If you do feel that need to jump onto pure, bait the BKB out, and just waste the Lincoln's, provide an opening, perhaps, for Matu to come in with, with his BKB dismember. I think the one thing with that is that it doesn't feel like Matu's that tanky. I mean, he's got the plate mail up. He doesn't have the highest HP in the world. Mind you, if you do manage to dismember the, the, the sniper, you don't really need to worry about a, any other source of big physical damage anyway. It's really just the Lash Rack kind of twacking away at you. So there could be value there, but in the execution entity, I think it's, it's more about entity just being able to play this way where Pure is just so far out that Liquid just never finds the angle. Yeah, it's, it is honestly all about this angle, and it feels like it keeps getting smaller and smaller as the game goes. Sniper is this kind of hero where the later the game goes, the harder it is to catch him because it's not that he gets weaker, it's that everyone else just gets stronger. Everyone else has more tools to save him or to stun you or to kind of disable and catch him. It's only when it gets to the very, very late where now on the other side, Liquid now has six items on every single hero. They have the Ags and the Tusk. That's when it kind of flips back in their favor, but Boxy's ha having a rough game. He hasn't been able to get much farm. He's had a lot on his shoulders after this amazing Dyer's early game he had. It hasn't air really air. kind of transferred Radiant's into this mid lake. I remember speaking to some of the boys from Liquid as well just before the series started, and they I did ask them, was, is this going to be an action-packed game? And they said, well, ask Entity. We're the ones that want to fight. And right now, it's kind of the opposite way. Liquid, they're the ones that just want to try and stay Dyer's away from this dire side. And I suppose that plays into the hand of Entity, because they are a team that enjoys playing a slower-paced game. Dyer's they're not afraid of going Dyer's into the later Dyer's stages. Dyer's and Liquid, they're in a position where they're forced to try and play that game that Entity already enjoys playing. It's kind of like you're in their arena and they've got the buff here as uh, Entity. I mean, to be fair Radiant's to them, they are the ones chasing right now as they do draw out some lines down to the bottom side. Liquid, they are going to go for a four-man smoke. Let's see if this one pays off. Kataomi, he's ready on the high ground to break the smoke and they've got some decent vision in that triangle. At least for the Entity side. Nice scout by the Adelon. He's going to see them all. It is oh. Tumba. He's going to jump in. They see Toby first. They'll try to blow up with the Lagoon. That's a lot of damage. They've got Toby and they've got Fishman. Now the oh. Black Hole is out. They've got the Leshrac. It's only one, but it's a big target. Boxy in the meantime, he has gone down. He's going to try and burst down this tiny. Matumba still taking through all the damage to the Cookie. It's not going to land with the hook shot. It is Kataomi trying to run away with the Sil Totem. He's going to make it out. Matumba, he is going to go down. Meanwhile, towards the north side, still trying to run, but the battery assault! Oh, Fishman barely in time is gonna make it. Who wins out the team fight? It does seem like it's Entity once again. Yeah, again, they have to buy back on both supports. Every fight, it seems Entity wins. Two supports have to buy back, but it doesn't really matter. The cores keep getting bigger and bigger, and... There's... Not how do they, they black hole. The Leshrax black hole for free for four seconds. They No stops, and he takes 200 damage total during the whole black hole. They have nothing for the BKBs. It just goes back to that. Going for the Magic Lena, going for Core Podge. Once the BKBs are up, you just don't have a way of piercing. And if that happens to the Lesh, you can expect that same thing to happen if Pure was around as well. Like the Sniper has the same defensiveness. Once the BKB is up, Liquid, they've got to find a way to fix that issue. Is it? Is there any way to fix that issue, though? Well, you've gone all in on Magic. There is a 25 talent for Lena. It makes it Pure and Pure's BKB. And that's maybe one kill, but Dying the counter to one kill is an Aegis. 
So for the side of Entity, they're gonna pick up the Sages. They're gonna get the Shard. Toby's gonna take it. Uh, this is this the second Roche, guys. That's the big one. That's where games are ended. And goes Entity now. See if they want to try and force the end. There's still a T2 tower at this top lane, but they can easily get through with the damage of Pure. Even a Scythe device now up and available for Stormstormer. So much more control from this Lesh Rack. He isn't with his team yet, but he's got those BOTs up, so he can join at any time. Do they want to continue? There's just so much time on the Aegis, they may as well just kind of get themselves together, maybe go for a bit of a fight before they try for the high crown. You look back at Mickey, he's still trying to maximize the magic field, looking to go into the Octarine core now. Like you said, I mean, somehow you've got to clean out the BKBs throughout the fight. That's the only way for Liquid to take them. Entity, they just don't seem concerned whatsoever. They've had full control over this game for pretty much the last 20, 25 minutes, and Liquid's still looking for an answer here. I suppose it's a bit of a silly question. There's no way Mickey can kind of transition now to a right-click build anyway. It's way yeah, too late for that. It's a little too late. At this point, it's just playing for the 25. I, I could even see him, instead of going for the Octarine, going for a refresher. And just hoping for the ability to just press Laguna twice, do like 2,000 something magic damage, pure damage, and just kill a hero. But it's it's a hard it's a hard ask. They're asking for a lot. Yeah, it's really risky as well if if you don't manage to get that burst down because you have to keep that refresh in your inventory. Not the worst thing for the lean out. It's also not quite the ideal as you're going to be very squishy when you do get jump entity. Again, they're they're playing a very patient game here. Pure is working onto his own swift blink up, gets another double damage rune on that sniper. So that could enable the high ground for them. Just kind of need to keep the lanes further shoved out. And as Liquid at least has some room up top to kind of farm at least one lane out. Yeah, generally with Aegis, you don't want to use the, the very first minute of the Aegis is the farming part. Because you have, you have four minutes, you have five minutes total. So you want to use the first minute, maybe two, group up push all the lanes in, get the map in a nice pretty position where everything's pushing in, and then when there's two minutes left, that's where it feels awkward. Killing the Aegis doesn't feel that good because they only had a minute or two left, but if you don't kill him, now he's just taking your whole base. That they are. They're going to run after that tier 3. Laguna is already out. Hawk is there as well. They've got the Undying, but Toby, he's going to survive. Four Staff is out. Maybe instead they get cut to Omi, but the Four Staff's away with the Seal Totem. He's still running. Pure with the double damage. Just rips by a new one. Look at this, Mickey. He's trying to run. The Hawk's going to save the day, but the Assassinate. Oh, it's in the fountain. Look at Pure go. He's not done yet, he wants four. What are we aiming, Pure? In fact, they're gonna go in. Hulk oh. is there. Boxy, has he set up? Pure, no, the four staffs. He's gonna be able to get out once again. They just can't catch him. Triple kill now for Pure, as he's onto the tier four towers. It's not looking good for Entity, or rather Liquid. They're gonna three-man smoke up, try one more time to save this game too. But Entity, they'll just keep going for the tier four towers. Only one left. How do you try and defend this? There's Side the vice out on Mickey. Pure right to it. They just can't catch up. They can't even get close to him. He can be black hole in five seconds. That's kind of the last hope for Liquid right now. And we go, Matamba, he's gonna try and bait for this one. Mickey, he'll join in as well. Toby, still taking through it. He's gonna go down, that's one down, but Matamba in trouble, Zion. He's also been spotted. Pure's just not letting him get anywhere near the sniper. Don't forget, you've still got that secondary life. They still hold on to that final T4. They do jump in again, Matumba. He wants the first life, but the four stops are there. The Hawk oh. is going to land. He's got the first one. Zai, he's still in his range. He's got the black hole. It's going to connect on two of them. Pure is distracted right now. Have they done it? Can Liquid keep defending? Kataomi is going to drop it. They've got the Mickey oh leader. God. It's all over. There's only one left. It's only Zai. And without the black hole, there's no way they defend this. And three, or do they? Boxy, he's back up but it's it's just it's basically two supports against the sniper pure he's got the hand up high fives all around they'll kick away the left track storm stopper he might drop it it's not gonna matter gg's called we are going to a game number three. Oh yeah i mean it was a valiant effort coming out there for liquid towards the end but it just doesn't line up pure is just way too big they had no catch for the back line uh, Gunner, where do you think it kind of went down? Because it felt like they had such an amazing start for Boxy, but it just didn't pan out. I think the pure just... I think the bot tower defense, this tier one bot actually mattered a lot for how their momentum was going in the early game. They they did great in their lanes. Boxy was in seven kills early. Again, crushing the early game, but they make a choice. They defend this bot tower and 
doesn't really work out. They lose four heroes, I think, and that's where Entity, that's where they started. Pure didn't even show up. He gets all his farm, he gets all these items, and just the game snowballs from there. What do you think Liquid can do different in Game 3? Like, if you're going to change anything, at least in this craft, do you think, what do you think they need to change up at least to win out this Game 3? They, I don't know if they have to change up much in general. I think the game plan they're doing is solid, as well as Entity. I think they're both having really solid game plans, and I think it more comes down to the execution. I think the drafts are fine, the way that they're like mentally, it looks like they're mentally playing really well games. It's just execution, making those small little choices. Those are what really matters in the game. Well, with that, we'll be back with our game three draft very soon. But let's see what our panel had to think about this game number two. Thank you very much indeed. What a game for the second time. This international, we are going distance to the third game. Can't wait to see it, but we got away a little bit. Got to give the teams a little bit of a breather and talk about how this happened because if you only watched the first like five, ten minutes of that game, it's you over. would not have believed yeah. that that sniper turned into the beast it turned out in the end, Jenkins. Yeah, it's funny because like the, uh, they were kind of feeding that lane with the clockwork and the sniper after that insane dive on the tier one tower at level one. <laughs> yeah. You just see sniper getting pelted by tier one tower shots. But uh, the other two cores uh, kind of carried the early game with the lead that they had. They, they actually had a 1k uh, gold lead. Uh, despite the uh, the kills looking very bad for them, and then uh, it gave Pure the ability to just farm up and be the absolute monster that he was in this game. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of things I want to mention, but I'm just really glad that Entity went for the sniper because we did mention it before the draft started that going back to comfort is so important and that we wanted to see the sniper come out, and mm -hmm. it did in such a convincing fashion. Initially, we were watching in the green room, and I was just confused because I had this level one sniper and his clockwork <laughs> diving tower. It was awesome. Versus though. an enigma <laughs> and a tester. How? What? What was your plan there? But what's going on there? I mean, it was a really sick ice shards from Boxy that kind of put them in a bad situation in the first place, but they did it twice. Not once, but twice. And not just that. Uh, Mika completely destroyed mid on Melina, and somehow Entity found their way back into the game. They put Pure in the jungle, he farmed up, they ra rallied around that Undying, who, even though was played as a core, kind of played that more of a supportive role, right? 